Okay, so if you don't know what back-end development is, or you're thinking about learning it, maybe you're a front-end developer, maybe you've never coded before, whatever it is, this video is going to be for you. Okay, so there is one thing that you're going to need to download for this, the link will be in the description. This is called Node.js. Now, what Node.js is, is a runtime for JavaScript on the desktop. So usually, JavaScript would be run on the browser, um, but what happened is someone did some C++ magic, um, and then made it available to us. So just like Python that you can run on the desktop, you can run Node.js on the desktop. So if we open like a rebel here and do console.log, Hello? Then we get that, instead of having to do it on the browser. Oh, and before you continue, I highly recommend watching the first link in the description. It's a video explaining what a backend is. Uh, and then once you've watched that, you should be able to watch this video with a bit more of an understanding of what I'm doing here. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is create a project for your folder. And once you're in this folder, you just want to open your terminal inside this folder. What we want to do is just check that Node.js is installed. So you can do this by doing node-v, um, and it should give you a version. If it gives you like command not found, uh, like this, then it's not installed properly. Open this in your desired text editor. I'm going to be doing it in VS Code, so I'm just going to run the command code dot, and then it will open VS Code in this directory. If you want to open your command line inside VS Code, um, you can do this from up here, or you can, you can use the shortcut. Um, so I can just do this. Um, and now that Node is installed, all you need to do is npm init. Uh, and this will create a Node.js package for you. And um, this is like the space that your project is going to be inside. Um, now, uh, this doesn't all matter. Uh, you can do dash y here um, to speed up the process a little bit, but it's not too important. So once you've done this, you should see a package.json, which will just contain all the project data here. What we want to do is we want to actually open our command line and we want to install a package called Express.js. Okay, so what Express.js is, is basically a library that we can use with Node.js to create API endpoints with JavaScript. So what this means is that we can create endpoints for uh, adding data, taking data away. And what this means is that you can create a HTTP request to the API, and then the API will act accordingly. So you'll see what this is like in action, and I'll try and explain it as best I can. To install the package, what you want to do is npm install, and then you want to just enter the package name, in this case, express. Uh, and this will add this and create a node modules folder for us, meaning that we can then use this library in our JavaScript code. You want to create an index.js file. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to ensure that you've imported the express library, meaning that JavaScript can access all the utilities that it provides us. So what we can do is we can use this express utility to actually create a, an express server. So what we can do is we can just say const app. Um, I usually prefer to call it server, a lot of people call it app, and you just call the express function. So we just want to create a variable called port, and I'm going to name mine 3001. But the port doesn't really matter because this is just for development purposes, just make sure that it's not, it's not being used by some front-end application or anything like that. Okay, so to start our server, we actually want to do server.listen. This is a function that essentially creates a server for us, makes it live on our computer. So the first argument is going to be the port, so in this case 3001, and then after that we're just going to print out a message uh, telling us that the server is running and there's no problems. Okay, so once you've done this, all you need to do is node dot, um, and that automatically will detect this index.js. Just make sure it's called index.js, but if it's not, you can do node index.js and it'll do the same thing. Uh, you can see that we're getting our message server is running, and if we go into the browser, and if we go to localhost, which just means it's hosted on our machine, um, and go to port 3001, uh, it will tell us that we can't get there, but um, you'll notice that if we go to some um, random domain that the, the message would be different. Uh, so this basically means that there is nothing on this route um, and we can change this by obviously adding something there. Okay, so now it's time to create our first API route. Now. Uh, we're just going to create a simple hello world. What we want to do now is we want to create a callback, meaning that any code inside this block just here is going to be run when we make a request to the slash route. So the request object contains all of the information sent, so things like headers, body, everything like that will be sent here, and then the backend can use this to then give an appropriate response. So the response object gives us control over what we actually send back to the client. So in this case, we're going to be sending hello world back to the client and that's just going to be simple text. So what we want to do is we want to say res.status200. Now the status here is going to be sent to the client as well and this essentially gives the browser and the front end information on how successful the HTTP request was. So these are the most commonly used status codes that you're going to be seeing in backend applications. There are actually a lot more than these but these just keep it simple and these are going to be the ones that you probably want to be aware of. So obviously the 200 one is the success or okay protocol which we're providing and then we have 300 ones which are redirection. Then we have the 400 
500 status codes, which is going to be unauthorized, forbidden, not found, stuff like that. And then we're going to have 500 codes, which means that there's something that has gone wrong in the server. So back to the application, we give it a status of 200, meaning that everything went well. And we're just going to send uh, the simple text, hello world. Now, obviously this isn't gonna work until we restart our server because it needs to reinterpret the code. So we just wanna press Control C in our terminal and do node again. So now if we go to localhost 3001, you'll see that we get hello world. And this is because we've told it to send the text hello world. Sending text like this uh, is not always the best idea because we might have multiple pieces of data that we need to interpret from the front end. So the most common method around this is using something called JSON. Now JSON allows us to notate objects in a way that can be easily read from front end code. Um, we might want to send like a name or something like that. So we can do name and we can just say something like Joe. Now, if we restart our server again, remember control C and we go back here uh, and we press refresh, we get the actual JSON data. And then from the front end code, it might look something like this. You might want to get the request and you might just want to say res.name and then you can actually get that data from the JSON. Now, just a quick example of how paths work is if we want to change this to slash Joe, uh, then we can do so. And then if we restart our application, and we view it here, if we refresh on the slash route, you'll notice that we can't get the slash route anymore. And that's because we've changed this to Joe. So if we go to slash Joe, uh, we'll actually get this data. Oftentimes we use a backend to be able to store data and keep it safely away from the front end so people can't steal it. I'm gonna to demonstrate to you a basic version of how this might work. Now, usually you wanna use something like a database because that means that if the server goes down, the data is still gonna be stored on the hard drive. Uh, but in this case, we're just gonna be storing it in memory because it's not a serious application and it doesn't matter all that much. So there are a few different types of doing requests here. We have get, post, patch, and delete. Now get is usually used when we want to read data. This is the type of request we can actually use from the browser. Post is when we want to create data, patch when we want to update data and then delete when we obviously want to delete data. Now what we want to do is we want to create a post route uh, and this is because we're adding data to the database. What we're going to do is just add a simple user object and then retrieve that using a get request. So we're going to do slash user um, and we can use the same path for a post and get uh, route as long as they're different methods. And then again we're going to add this callback here. So the client's going to send a request body to the back end and what the back end's going to be able to do is read this and then in this case add a user to the database. Obviously we're doing this in memory. So this body is actually stored in the request.body property. Uh, now we could manually do this and just say dot name but uh, usually it's good practice to use view structuring in JavaScript so what we can do is we can say const name equals rec.body. And then we just want to create a users array up here, uh, which is just going to contain all of our users. So we're going to say const users equals empty array. Now what we want to do is actually add the user to the users array. So what we want to do is users dot push name. Then we just want to tell the client that everything went okay. So we're going to do res dot status 200, and we're just going to send success. You want to rename this Joe route to users and actually remove this code here inside the callback. So what we want to do on the get request is actually just send the users array. So what we're going to do is res dot status 200 and then we're just going to add the JSON of the users. We also want to make sure that the users array is on top of here uh, just so JavaScript doesn't get confused. One thing I forgot to do is actually use the JSON middleware meaning that express supports the JSON type. So what we want to do is we just want to say server.use express.json and make sure you call it as well with these brackets just here. So now what we want to do is we want to start the application again with no dot and then if we come over here and make a request to the users route, make sure it's a get request, uh, and we press shift enter, uh, you'll see that we get an empty array and that's because we don't have any users yet uh, and you can see that we're actually defining it as an empty array here. Now if we change this to a post request, meaning that we're creating something, um, as you can see defined here, and we change this to user which as you can see is the route name here, we can actually add the body. So what we can do is go over to the body section, go over to raw, and then make sure this is JSON. Uh, we can add a name, and the reason that this is called name is because we're destructuring name from the request body. So we're gonna add the name Geo. Uh, you can call it whatever you want. You can call this Carl if you want, um, whatever. And then you press send you'll see that we get the success message is what we've told it to do. So finally, if we go to get again and we change this to users, uh, it doesn't matter if you have this here, but obviously it's good practice to remove this. And then if we press send, you'll see that Carl is now in the users array. So hopefully this video gives you a good representation of what a backend is and how it works, what it's used for, everything like that. If you'd like to see a more in-depth video on how backends work, then definitely let me know in the comments. If you'd like to see anything else on this channel, also let me know uh, because I'd love to know what you guys want to learn. This is my second channel, so if you enjoyed, make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you in the next video.